Hi, I'm Elle and welcome to my channel. Today I will show you how to create realistic ocean bases without the need of a 3D printer and using only some green stuff by Green Stuff World. If you never use green stuff, it's a room temperature curing two-part epoxy putty. Mixing equal parts produces a sticky green putty that feels a lot like chewed bubblegum. Once mixed, it has a work life of 90 minutes, allowing time for shaping and detailing, reaching ultimate hardness after 24 hours. This one's already rolled out, cut in a 2x5cm rectangle and primed. I'll use some of this body to attach my ship to the base. You could use glue as well, but I wanted my boat to be slightly raised from the base. The models I'm using today are from the AEG game Dead Reckoning by John DeClaire. When you see that it's safe to work with, roll some small pieces of putty into cylinders that we'll place around the ship. No need to glue this as the green stuff hardens after 24 hours. If you think you need more putty, don't be shy and add some more. And now this is ready to sculpt. There are different tools out there to help you sculpt a putty. The one I'll be using has a round end, slightly bent, and it looks like a small spatula. So I'll start creating diagonal dents on the putty while doing some circular motions to start giving shape to my waves. This is by far the most fun part of the process, at least for me, because it's great to see how your sculpting starts to be effective by creating the illusion of big splashes and waves crashing against the ship kind of effect. I had to change my base holder because my little cork wasn't liking all the rough sculpting action apparently. When I worked on these waves, I went with all in the same direction, but you definitely can mix some going the other direction as well, since it's the ocean and in a base, no pattern. Once I was happy with my waves, I flattened the bottom of the waves to close the gap between them and my base and scraped off the excess. Now we sculpt in the same way all around and we let it cure for 24 hours. this step as the end result will heavily depend on it. Take your time and have fun! This is the blue ship that I was working on at the beginning and here's the process once more. After 24 hours, we are ready to prime. I used a gray primer and I would advise to do all this before your mini is fully painted. But I didn't have that option since I was asked to make these bases after I finished painting them. Oh well, it all worked out in the end, but I do recommend doing the whole process 
before you paint your mini and prime it all together at the same time. Once dry, we're ready to add some color. For this, I use Green Stuff World Black Stallion, Summer Sea Blue, various other blues from Scale Color I had around, and Green Stuff World Nuclear White. Start with Black Stallion at the base. And then I'll tap up and down, feathering the paint as I will wet blend it with the blues. One of the scale color paints at the bottom right I had the pigment and medium separated, so I couldn't use that one. The other scale color blue was mixed, but it wasn't sticking the way I wanted. added some summer sea blue from Green Stuff World to the mix and the flow was a lot better. I cover the midsection of the waves with this tone. continued with scale color Caribbean blue and added some summer sea blue and nuclear white to improve the flow. This lighter tone I'm adding to the top section of the waves. These were my color choices. You can decide what colors are better for you but definitely have some black, white, and at least two different shades of blue for this. Now the lattice tone only touches the top and raised edges of the waves. After the paint dried a little, I saw that the edge between the black and blue was rather sharp, so I went ahead and created a mid-tone between these two colors to smooth out the transition. Wet blending is a fun technique that involves the mixing of two paint colors on the model while both paints are still wet.
Now that I'm happy with my tones, it's time to add some white creating the effect of the ocean's foam. So I use some nuclear white and gently tap the most raised edges. off the excess paint on my finger because this very much resembles a dry brush technique so I don't want a whole lot of paint on my brush if you're interested on the brush and materials I use here you can find them all in the description below Notice some larger flat areas on the waves. So I added a touch of paint and after cleaning my brush with water, I went over them and dragged the paint down, giving them a really nice effect. found another spot right here. Apply a matte varnish to your work and now we are done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful and consider liking and subscribing. You can find me on Twitch once a week and if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time, pay more minis!